With the success of Mario Kart Tour on mobile phones, it makes sense that other players would enter the market of targeting children and vulnerable people on the largely unregulated mobile platforms. After all, money is money, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this free-to-play game will venture the more devious side of gaming. But we'll find out if it's the exception instead of the rule here on Kid Game Breakdown. Kart Rider Drift is a free-to-play kart racer released January the 11th, 2023. And upon opening the game, you might be impressed by the visuals of the introductory cutscene. It feels like something straight from Batman, albeit set in a colorful chibi world. There were also other cutscenes that were displayed the first time I launched the game, but didn't the subsequent times I opened it, so they might change them out seasonally. But when you finally launch the game for the first time, like other free-to-play games, it launches you into an unskippable tutorial that teaches you the basic of the game, as well introducing the player to the typical free-to-play systems, and of course, the store. I will say it is less aggressive than others, but does offer pay to win, albeit to a lesser extent than its competition. A quick look at the gameplay will show you exactly why. You see, Kart Rider Drift has to be one of the worst kart games I've ever played, and that's coming from someone that's played most of them. First of all, the handling is awful, and the AI rubber banding is some of the worst I've ever seen. Against the AI, I was typically able to maintain a strong position, despite more premium vehicles having better acceleration and speed, but when I did find myself ahead, the poor level design would hinder me and allow the others to catch up. So ultimately, does this make the game worth playing as an adult? No. The game simply feels awful, and the race doesn't even seem to begin until the final lap. The microtransactions aren't super aggressive, but you should be careful, especially if you fall victim to FOMO. The races also require an internet connection, and even then, the races against the AI can be laggy. Is it worth letting your kid play? Kind of. Eye-catching characters or faster carts might provide enough desire to require a more stringent monitoring, but it also offers opportunities to use it as a parenting tool as opposed to the more reckless and dangerous babysitter. The gameplay isn't my cup of tea, but it is functional while also offering a fairly steep learning curve. AI opponents are turned on by default, making it less dangerous to leave your kid unmonitored when compared to other games such as Roblox, so it's definitely more difficult of a choice to make. Though I would personally encourage you to purchase a game without microtransactions, being able to afford the system required might be another task. But let me know if you've come across any great free-to-play alternatives in the comments below. Check out my previous video on LEGO Star Wars and consider subscribing. Until then, this has been Rob the Slob, and I'll see you on the virtual commute.